Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. Today I have a DIY for you guys that literally anyone can do. All you need is some CDs, some paint, and some tape, and you're all set for this easy DIY. I would ask that you please stay for the duration of this video as I will be giving tips and tricks and things that I wish I knew going in before I took on a project like this. Believe it or not, such a simple project does have its challenges, so... And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments down below and I will help you to the best of my ability. So we're finally ready for the voiceover. So to start, I have an entire thing of CDs that haven't been touched in probably over a good decade. One recommendation I would make is to use a completely blank CD, otherwise you're kind of just wasting something useful. Also, another thing I want to say is please get permission before you destroy a CD, as it is no longer playable once you paint on it, obviously. I'm just saying. just. Be sure! So first, I want to experiment and see the best methods for removing the hollow part on the CD. Some methods I saw online, including the first method we're going to try, which is the exacto method. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, this method sucks. Unless you have a very specific type of exacto, the chisel type, this one will leave very deep cuts and grooves on the surface of the CD, and it takes forever to remove the flakes. Number two is scotch tape, which does work 100%, but it takes much longer because it's so small. But isn't this just beautiful? Okay, so I saw a TikTok of this one, and I'm here to tell you this is a myth. It doesn't work at all, in fact, it leaves the CD looking rather foggy. So out of all of the methods I tried, only one really works effectively. So the number one method for this is masking tape or packing tape because it's so wide and so sticky, it'll work perfectly. So how do we actually make the CD clear? First thing you're going to want to do is make a small cut with scissors, not to the point of cutting into the CD, but just scraping off some of that hollow peel. Now you'll want a piece of tape and you'll just smooth it over and then you're ready to peel up. It's a bit like waxing, so you want to be gentle, but also firm, otherwise it won't peel off as easy. Repeat until all the hollow is gone, which does take a bit of time and patience, so just relax and take your time. Also, the tape is so sticky, it can bend the CD and snap it if you're not careful, so watch out. This is a pretty satisfying process, if I'm honest with y'all. I washed off any of the leftover sticky bits with warm water and soap, and this is completely optional, but I just like a clean surface. Now we're ready to paint. Also, here's a tip. If your CDs have a blue or purple hue to them you don't want, you can use acetone to remove that. It will make the CD a bit cloudy, as we saw before. So I skipped that because I honestly like the color, and isn't this just so mesmerizing? I wanted to start with a really simple for the first one, so this is a simple drip style. This is the first time I've ever made art like this, and it's actually really cool once it's all done and finished. I know that I know this looks bad, just hold on, don't click off. So here's the thing you might not know, because I didn't know this going in. Painting on a plastic type surface like this means acrylic paint won't get the chance to dry as easily, which means you have a lot of wiggle room to correct mistakes and rework it, but it also means you'll probably make a lot more mistakes while waiting for it to dry. So to adjust to a surface like this, give yourself plenty of time and don't rush through it is definitely what I've learned. I did two layers of this and I tried to shade it, but that's just not gonna happen on a surface like this. It doesn't look right. Once it dried, it didn't look quite right to me, so I went for a cartoonish look by adding a black outline. This is just a way to kind of complete the feel of it. The other unfortunate thing here is that your paint isn't going to build up as smoothly on a surface like this. Then I added highlights to finish it off, and it is completely done. This 
This one is super easy and so cute, so if you're short on ideas or you're not sure what to begin with, this might be a good one for you. Design number two is going to be a minimal design. I started by painting flower stems in a brownish black and I kept them relatively thin. Next, not to seem like a life hack channel, I used a q-tip for the flower petals. The reason this works so well is it's small enough to control and get the shape right the first time. Next, I added red over the pink before it dried for layering and shading, then spread it a bit with a flat brush. A q-tip will work just fine instead if you don't have a brush on hand. This was still missing that certain something just like the other one, so I added white and red dots. It's very colorful and changed the mood of it completely. I did make a second one in yellow, and the cool thing is when you put it down like this, they do that. It's, it, it's cool. Design 3 I have kind of a complicated relationship with. I started by painting white backgrounds as I wanted lollipops and felt like the colors themselves would take a long time to build up otherwise. I really tried here with them, but spirals are just something my brain has a really hard time computing. I even reference photos, but I feel like by the end of it I sorta of got the feel of it, so in future maybe I can do this? Oh, you're wondering why the disc looks so dirty? Fun fact, I started over on this very CD over five times because the previous designs just didn't sit well with me. Orange paint apparently does not like to wash off. Looking like mac and cheese powder. So what I did to cover this was I painted the back a teal shade, and it did end up making the lollipops pop, and it hid the orange a lot more. Like with the flowers, I added rainbow dots like little button candy. Next, I added a second coat, then sealed in the design on the front as this would chip and peel otherwise. Shiny. Leaving it to dry for an hour, this is the end result. I can't say I'm in love with it, but for my first time painting something like this, I think it's okay. Our last design is going to be abstract. I love rainbows, and so I wanted to go for a completely different vibe than the others. I taped off half of the CD and spun rainbow colors together, and I failed a little. Then I peeled to prepare the second half, which would be a simple grey, white, and black. Is this supposed to have a deeper meaning? No. Is it supposed to resemble something? Also no. I just think it looks cool. The flip side of it looks really interesting too. But here's the finished product. And here's a final look at all of them and my final thoughts. 
Overall, plastic surfaces are not easy to paint on and create designs, but it can be done if you're patient and don't rush. This is the biggest tip, this is the biggest thing I want to emphasize. Rushing through it is going to screw up the design or you're just going to be left unhappy with it and give up halfway through. In the end, you'll end up with some pretty cute room decor that you made on the cheap cheap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, if you have any questions or need any help with anything, just let me know in the comment section down below and I will 100% respond and try and help you to the best of my ability. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope I will see you here next time. Goodbye! <laughs>